Loveland Magazine TV videos are brought to you by the generous support of MoveToLoveland.com. So, Claire, thank you for coming. Yeah. Um, so, when did you first get the idea for writing the story? Well, I've been a sort of an artist all my life. Yeah. But then the idea of, of this particular thing that's probably blended with the fact that when I was a little girl, when somebody would die, I would make a picture of a caterpillar, a cocoon, and a butterfly. Because it seemed like such a symbol of the daring to hope for a life beyond this one. Yeah. A radical shift, a very radical change, because I can't think of any image that shows the difference between a, a caterpillar and a butterfly, can you? Yeah. I mean, it's just simply extraordinary that, that it's the same creature with the same life inside mm. it and looks so totally different. It looks like, the one looks like something you want to step on. Partial copy of the book I had made in 1965 at the end of Vatican II, when the church had changed so much and all Catholic institutions were changing so much and the Grail was changing too. So I did this and it's kind of about Tayyar de Jardin, the upward, upward and, the, and the forward vision of life. And so here we have what you can see is the beginning of my lettering style. And so when I came, I went, this was 1965. After that I went to Egypt and worked and I ended up in Paris finding it in, in, a, in a closet in Paris and nobody knew it. So, so uh, I mean, nobody was wanting it. Nobody wanted to use it. And so I put it, took it home and then I was at a conference and there was a priest from Paulus Press who came up and I said, do you ever read manuscripts? And he said, yeah, I'll take it home. He took it to the hotel and he read it and he came back and said, when you get back to New York, come and see us. So this was what I signed on. But Hope for the Flowers is a much simpler book and with the image that's universal, caterpillar and a butterfly. So, but this is the way it was. And this is the upward hope. And then we have a, a horizontal hope by doing things. And then, let's see if I can find it. So here's the horizontal, here's a vertical crossing. And a life is, recognize that image as what the, one of the things we're dealing with and dealing with it right now. And philosophy was at the top. So you climbed the ladder. So my image was this, climbing the ladder. So you can see in Hope for the Flowers, the climbing of the pillar up to the top is the same idea, that you think there's something good if you get to the top, and this is supposed to be the top. So, so marriage and having children, we're, we're down in here, and just contemplating, sitting and contemplating, we're way up here, and then I turned it the side. That was a very important idea for me, that it's how much love you have, whatever, whatever rung of this ladder you go in. So it's, about, it's to be, we're to, going to be judged by love. That's the judgment. It evolved to Hope for the Flowers. It was like the gift of God that, that it evolved to something that was much more accessible to more people around the world. Okay, I was doing this book in 1965 for, because of the great changes in the world and the church. Yeah. And I was trying to deal with it a bit. Uh, the end of, as a Catholic, at the end of Vatican II, everything was changing. Yeah. So I did this for the Grail Movement, which is also changing. And so I, I then went off to work in Egypt, an experience in Egypt with girls whose fathers were making $25, $50 a year. Can you imagine? I mean, but it was in the socialist government by Nasser. That means that everything was socialized, so the poor did not die. They had subsidized bread and oil and things like this. This is in the middle of Egypt. And then the Six-Day War came. I was going to stay another year. The Six-Day War came and they evacuated me, evacuated me, because I'm a blonde American who didn't speak much Arabic. 
and so they brought me to Egypt. So I was the, the privilege of being in Egypt. So all these changes, privilege of being in, in Paris during 1968, when Martin Luther King was killed, and Robert Kennedy was killed, and the whole world was talking about revolution of some kind yeah. or another. I had done this, and I signed with the Kapolis Press, who, who took it and they signed it. It's a theology of hope, we called it. And then it was, I had changed between the revolutionary stuff of Paris and, and the say, late 60s, and then the experience of very poor girls in Egypt. Because yeah. when I came back to the United States, that's when I had my culture shock. I didn't have it going there. I expected different food and different things, yeah. but I didn't. So, so I had that privilege. Mm -hmm. Privilege. Yeah. When I was doing that, uh, yeah. that second book, it got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. So one day, the cover was already the butterfly and the caterpillar image. Yeah. So one day it seemed to win its own book. So yeah. it seemed to climb off. And one day, I just followed it, didn't eat, didn't, didn't stop, just went, and the whole day, and it was like 90% finished. Now, I never finish things like that all the time. Yeah. I, I rewrite and rewrite. Mm -hmm. And I did with that, too. That last 10% of change was, here we uh, have this story already, and I tell my editor, I said, I think this is the book we should publish. And he says, oh, no, you know, oh, no. But he finally did agree, so he did publish it a couple of years later. And making these pictures that you see around, that took me a, a year of my life just to do the, the final artwork of it. The wow. book was done, but then it took, because it was done without a computer, mm -hmm. with little pieces of paper all pasted together, and the black separated from the yellow. Yeah. And. Uh, did you ever have any ideas on changing anything about the book? Like, did you have any like regrets or things that you would change? Not really, back? no. Hmm? Not really, because it was read by so many people before it was published. Yeah. And I made those changes then. We, hmm. we worked at it a lot. And one of the lovely things is that I have, I have some of the books. The 50th anniversary does not have the original thank yous. But I have a paper back there that does have it. Yeah. Where, where the ones, all the grail people, this is really the heart place that gave birth to this book. This mm -hmm. place that I was at for so many years. So back there is a sheet with the, with the yellow markers showing yeah. all the grail people that were there, all the people in my life that led up to it. Because mm -hmm. you don't, you might write the book, but it's all kinds of other people that have made your life the way it was that allowed you to write the book. Yeah. So it's kind of like that. So. Mm -hmm. So, well, did any of the people like kind of have like a role in the book, if you know what I mean? What do you mean? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Like, you know how you write about the caterpillars? Yeah. Were there any people in your life Who that were like caterpillars? Yeah. Well, the whole world was like a caterpillar pillar in a way. Yeah. I mean, people crawling over each other. It must be awfully good, <laughs> Claire, because everybody's going there. Yeah must be good. I want to see what's at the top. It must be good. It's hidden in the clouds right now. Mm -hmm. So so they crawl as caterpillars. But if they get to the top, they're pushed off and they die. Yeah. Without ever becoming themselves. And mm -hmm. this is so this is the heart of the thing. That that you die without becoming yourself, but you can get off mm -hmm. whatever pillar you happen to be on. Like I have to get off all my little pillars all the time. You know, yeah. where I want to, I tend not to treat people, and treat people as properly as I should, or whatever mm -hmm. pillar you're on, or the pillar of doing good, mm -hmm. or thinking that you're doing good. And so that happens with humans all over, over and over. Yeah. We're not caterpillars, really. We're, they only happen once to them. But the idea that if we get off and dare risk the dark night of the soul, or the cocoon, our own cocoons, we can be, we can come out the other end and then yeah. we can carry the love of one flower to another mm -hmm. and help fertilize them and then be fed by their nectar. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Yeah. Do you know when you got that philosophy? 
or what started you to think that way? Oh my goodness. I think it was believing in life beyond this one. Yeah. But I don't didn't want to put that explicitly in the parable mm -hmm. because the meaning of hope for the flowers is that you can take it on every, any level you want. So my interpretation might not be yours, and also when you're a little kid or a teenager, people are free. People are free to take a parable, like Jesus' parables or whatever parable you want to take, yeah. and use it, and use it and do different things with it, and get different inspirations out of it. Yeah. So I'm just... I'm just feeling so grateful for that God gave me this gift. Mm -hmm. It's just that's lasted so long. Yeah. That seems to have gone around the world. So we have here hope around the world. So I have all, some of the, a few of the tra translations. Yeah. And I want to show you the, the Chinese one, which is the most beautiful one that was made. These are all out of print now, so I'm trying to figure out who wants to be the manager to put these back into print. Because yeah. at 93, I can't do that. So I want to show you this. This is the only one where they did two covers. They did a hard cover with a picture on it, and then they put the more traditional yellow cover over. But what a beautiful job. And of course, the Chinese calligraphy. So this one is ready to almost to go. We have to just scan it and put it into digital form. None of the foreign translations except the Thai version are in digital form. Yeah. So that's a whole display I have of the Thai over there for, for reasons that we can go into. But this is the 20th anniversary of the Korean. They did this special edition. And this is the, the Spanish, which is also out of print right now and should get back in. This is the Russian. This is the Japanese, but there's lots more, so I just brought these as samples. Do you have any experiences with all of the foreign copies? Like, have you shared them to any little children or women? No, because, no, I don't, I can't, I don't know how to do that. I can't read any of it. Yeah. This is all done by other people and other publishers. These are all published by publishers mm -hmm. around the world. But rights have now come back to me because they, they expired. Their, mm -hmm. their, their timeline expired. Yeah. So I'm looking for somebody right now, somebody who, who likes the idea of, be, of having a thing that goes around the world like mm -hmm. this, who will put it together and we can make at least e-books. And I have some people who will help with the graphics and make the digital versions. But there's that work to do. That's, that's, a, that's a big work. Yeah. But but we have the, the the files that can make it happen, so that's a project. Another one I can't take over. <laughs> at, the, at my age, I just can't take it on. So, but it'll be there even if I die. So yeah. somebody else could do it. Mm -hmm. So that's a way. At 93, I have to think like that. I just yeah. I'm not your age. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever think this book would go this far when you no. were writing it? No, but I did write it for the world. I yeah. wrote it for everybody because they say, what's your audience? Who do you want? Are you writing for kids or teenagers? Or I wrote it for everybody. Yeah. And that's what it's gone to. Everybody. What, what's really remarkable is that it seems to have crossed all the boundaries that separate people. <laughs> so we were talking, talking about the problem of talking politics these days when half the country seems divided, yeah. right? And, and the, the world seems so divided. And then we have the problem with the Abrahamic religions, which, which is what brought David and I together a lot. It's this one, this image, where we talk about love all the time and then are too ready for war. So, so what do we do? So we go on and we try to love and have yeah. gratitude for what we have, right? Mm -hmm. What else is there? Yeah. And so my theme is radical sharing, freely chosen. Both parts are important. And mm -hmm. so radical means root. It doesn't mean necessarily rah, rah, rah yeah. stuff. It means going to the root of the sharing because people can share in a superficial way, but then really share. And sharing probably means sacrifice at its depth. Mm -hmm. 
This is the image after Stripe and Yellow, the heroes of this book, have come down the pillar and enjoyed themselves a while. But Stripe, the male, decided he needed to see what was at the top and was going back. He wanted the yellow to come with him, but she felt that she should wait. She didn't know what she should do, but it was not a good idea to do that. So she then is desolate without him. It's absolutely desolate. But he's climbed, going back to climb the pillar, but she doesn't know what to do, so she finally wanders around. And she wanders around, and she lifts her head from her despair, from her despair, and she sees this caterpillar, and it looks like he's in trouble, all sticky and some sticky stuff. So she stops and says, you seem in trouble, can I help? And then he answers her, no, my dear, I have to do this to become a butterfly. What is a butterfly? And so the whole explanation of what a butterfly is goes on from there. That they carry the seeds of love from one flower to another and then are fed by the nectar from the, butter, from the flower itself. So they keep each other alive, which is so beautiful. So that's the sherry. So I wanted to show you this. This is, to me, the heart of the, of the whole story, the heart of the story. And it's the, it should be the heart of our lives and we'll have chances over and over again to stop our own journey long enough to say, you seem in trouble, can I help? Yeah. So that's the heart of Hope for the Flowers. Thank you for having this interview with me. Was, I really love the story too. It's, and thank you for interviewing yeah. me. Mm -hmm. I love talking about it because it's such a beautiful chance. Yeah. So bless you for That's doing good. this and thank you. Thank and you. I feel like I feel like a native coming home. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm an Ohio girl, grew yeah. up in Cleveland, graduated from Ohio State mm -hmm. and it was here at Grailville for many years. Yeah. So That's awesome. Thank you. Thank Loveland you. is a like second home for me. Yeah. Loveland magazine T V videos are brought to you by the generous support of move to loveland.com. Please like and subscribe to the Loveland Magazine YouTube channel so you never miss a new video.